For those of you that were there for the epic stream where it took me four whole hours to beat Melania, shout out to you guys. Polly, Weirdo, that was actually his username, you guys are friggin' awesome. It was a struggle from start to finish with an extremely satisfying conclusion, really like no other. Four, yes! If you guys are trying to catch moments like these live, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so you catch me on YouTube next time I'm streaming. With that being said, I have some things to say about this boss fight and the surrounding area before you even get the honor of fighting Melania, Blade of Mikila. <sighs> Heard that one way too many times fighting her, Jesus man. First, let's talk about the extra Halig Tree area. If Melania wasn't difficult enough for you, the Halig Tree area is pretty much a compilation of every terrible area from From Software's previous games. Souls vets know what I'm talking about here. A Blight Town swampy section, except this one gives you Scarlet Rot? Check. Those shitty snowfield areas that they haven't learned the player base absolutely hates? Give me another check. You can't see anything navigating through this area. And you can't pull up your map half the time because you're in combat, so you have absolutely no idea where you're going and just have to follow these shitty lights around until you kinda sorta happen upon where you're supposed to be. But then, the real fun begins. You get to this town where you're supposed to light four statues which are hidden in these super weird areas where you have to perform this ridiculous ass platforming, all the while these invisible enemies that can grab you and stab you in the stomach for half your health bar follow you around chasing you down and it's really hard to fight them because the target lock doesn't work because like I said they're invisible and super stealthy and oh my god it's just so obnoxious. I literally rage quit this area because of this section the first time. It's straight up the least fun I've had in a Souls game probably ever. This shit is worse than Blight Town in my opinion, and by god, that is saying something. Because Blight Town sucks. Like a lot of things in this area, it just had me questioning. Did this really have to be here? Couldn't they have just done away with this and let me pass through the barrier without me having to do this arbitrary task that's clearly here just to waste my time? Not to mention the platforming sections on these narrow ass tree roots, man. Why did they think this was a good idea? I'm not playing Elden Ring to play through these platforming sections, man. If I want to do platforming, I'll go grab my N64 and boot up Super Mario 64 for some good old fashioned gaming, okay? I play Elden Ring for the epic boss battles, the epic scenery, the epic loot, the cool builds, not this bullshit. The platforming is not Elden Ring's strong suit at all, so I hate that they really started to push these stupid sections on players just because of the inclusion of a dedicated jump button. I like the inclusion of a jump, but no triple jump? Okay, 0 out of 10 platforming, I'm sorry guys. Seriously though, the fact that these platforming sections become more and more prominent toward the end of the game feels like the devs were trying to create this artificial difficulty just to make the game feel longer. And then, as if the platforming sections weren't bad enough, they add enemies in the worst possible places with these projectile bubbles coming at you, heavy swinging weaponry that will easily send you flying off these narrow ass branches, or you'll just roll off the edge yourself while trying to dodge all this crazy ass shit, all while trying to navigate your way down through these meandering maze-like routes and it all just results in a really unfun time. Thankfully, it gets better once you're able to make it most of the way down and they kind of finally chill out on the platforming. Except for this section though, just look at this, there are way too many enemies here, man. You got people manning the ballistas, plus a tree boss blocking the way, plus a bunch of little minions all over the place. It's just really tedious to get through this area, so the best strat is really just to run through them and grab the Sight of Grace whenever you can. Now, once you're through all of that mess, you finally get to fight Melania. And man, I knew this boss was about to be something else, because I gotta say, the area is nothing in comparison to how hard this boss is. On the one hand, she's such a spectacle to fight. Her design is freaking badass and I love how her prosthetic clinks with certain attacks to help indicate what move she's about to do so that you can anticipate it and dodge accordingly. What I'm not kosher with is her ability to lifesteal. 
That is the most bullshit mechanic of any Souls boss and I will not have anyone in the comments say otherwise. She will literally steal health from you with each and every hit. And we're not just talking little itsy bitsy pixels of health, no. We're talking chunks. And with how many hits she can get on you in succession, you can be down half your flasks while she's still sitting there at full health, making your attempt completely worthless. First thing you need to do to fix this boss is get rid of her lifesteal ability. Straight up. Or at a minimum, make it so that when you block her attacks, she doesn't gain her health back. Because that just absolutely just doesn't make any sense. It's bananas. Now, I didn't use ashes during this fight. A lot of you on my previous video on the endgame bosses commented that ashes are a big help and a useful tool to get you through some of the more BS encounters like Godskin Duo and Malekith and so on. Which I would agree, but the problem is I never had enough FP to summon any of the more useful summons, and I neglected to upgrade any of them throughout my playthrough, so my summons were practically useless anyways. Still though, I never liked using summons during the boss fights anyway personally, it's just a personal preference. Yes, I made it harder on myself, but that's just how I like to play Elden Ring. The whole reason I'm talking about summons though is with Melania, using them is a detriment to you. Want to know why? She can lifesteal your ashes as well, to the point where fighting her on your own is a better idea. Talk about a horribly designed boss, sheesh! The summons, which everyone uses as a crutch for some of these badly designed boss fights, literally can't be used here, because she'll just lifesteal them instead of you. Now, if her lifesteal ability weren't bad enough, her waterfowl dance is by far the most foul thing that will get you killed the most. The startup on it is so quick that it's hard to react to. The only way I ever figured out how to dodge it was to have some actual distance between us when she started up her attacks so that I could run away from her first two strikes, roll into the third, and then roll away from the fourth. If I did that, I never got touched every single time. No bloodhound step, no ashes to distract her, just pure dodging skill here. And I have to say, it felt badass to be able to pull this maneuver off. The problem though, is when she starts up the attack, and either you were too busy trying to get an attack of your own in, or for whatever reason, you're too close to run away from her first two strikes during this insane ass attack. It doesn't matter what I did. I tried blocking with a shield for her first two strikes. Nope. I tried rolling in, away. I tried throwing my controller across the room and that didn't work. I died to that dance every single time if I was too close to her during that attack. Now, you can stop her from doing it with a freeze pot apparently during her startup, and I tried it to no avail. My throwing skills suck apparently. Still though, just because I couldn't get it to work doesn't mean this isn't a good way to balance this move out a bit. It just sucks that you can only carry three of them at one time, so if you miss any or if she does it more than three times, you're pretty much shit out of luck. For me though, I found it to be way more efficient to just dodge when I was at a proper distance. This worked way more consistently for me, and I think the way to fix this move is give more time for the player to get some distance before she starts her attack up. Again, every time I was able to get some distance between us, I never got hit. It's just that the attack is done at the most random times while having such a fast startup for such a long attack that getting past her first phase became pure luck because she either decided to do it when I was too close or I was far enough away to be able to avoid the attack. And yes, Bloodhound Step would have been useful here to get some distance, but even without Bloodhound Step, you should reliably be able to avoid that attack. Another huge problem with this attack though is, in my opinion, you don't even get to retaliate when she finishes her Thousand Blades of Death. She has one final flash of her blades that keep you away just long enough before she begins chasing you down again, and every time I would try to retaliate after successfully dodging that long ass attack, I would get punished for it instead. It's a problem with a lot of the bosses in this game. They're simply too aggressive, and this applies to Melania especially. If you dodge that attack the whole way through, you should absolutely be allowed to punish her extensively for it, not continue to be chased down by her. This attack combined with the lifesteal I complained about earlier is such a terrible combination though. Again, this is why I think taking out lifesteal would make this fight way more manageable, less tedious, and just straight up more fair. 
Phase 2. Ooh, honestly, I was a bit surprised she had a Phase 2 with how difficult I thought her first phase was. Okay. Guys? What do we do? I'm running away. Ooh! Oh, that actually fucking hurt me, dude. Thankfully, though, I don't have too many complaints here. Her first phase is very much like her second phase, so if you can beat phase one, you can definitely beat phase two. Except for this attack, holy shit, I didn't know she knew Shadow Clone Jutsu, goddamn! Her waterfowl dance here is just as BS. Honestly, I don't even know how I was able to beat her second phase. Granted, it's very similar to the first, she's just a lot more aggressive and in your face and, and a little bit tougher to avoid. Looking back at my attempt, I think, by the grace of God, she never ended up using her waterfowl dance on me during that portion of the fight, which is just another reason why I think this fight isn't so much about skill more than it is about luck. I had her downloaded 50 attempts before I had beaten her. It was more so just about getting the right RNG on some of her moves to where I wouldn't be caught in a shitty position whenever she did her thousand blades of bullshit, or she just straight up wouldn't use her waterfowl dance like in the attempt I finally beat her in. So if From kinda tweaks those two things, the lifesteal and her waterfowl dance, I think it'd be a damn near perfect fight, because even with those two rather huge annoyances, I still felt like I overcame this immense challenge when I finally took her down, and that's what playing these games is really all about. But you know, man, screw my boss analysis. The real way to fix this boss is to just summon let me solo her and let him defeat the boss for you, okay? Anyway, that's gonna be the end of this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I think this will be the start of a series where I go back and review significant bosses with an Elden Ring and give my thoughts on their design and just generally the way the fight plays out. If you guys would be interested in that, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below letting me know what boss you would like to see reviewed next. Otherwise, Melania, Blade of Mikola is gonna come waterfowl dance you through the screen, okay boys? I don't know, I'm a little too close. Yep. It's okay, just don't freak out, that's it. Alright, we're good. You don't quit, man. You really just don't ever stop. Oh, God. 